The Thespian Hoplites were some of the most unique hoplites to ever fight on the plains of Greece. They were one of the few groups that stayed behind with the 300 Spartans at the Battle of Thermopylae, and they also had a bloody reputation to go with it. Throughout most of its history, Thespiae, the city of which the Thespian Hoplites originated, was never particularly powerful. However, they had always been an aggressive city, already bringing at least three minor cities in Boeotia under their rule and protection. However, they were also a practical city. They knew they were not able to produce the military might of other expansionist cities. So they began looking for allies in the area. Thebes was the most dominant in Boeotia, so an alliance was formed. This didn't seem to have affected the Thespian warlike nature. Between 700 and 650 BC, the Thespians descended on the quote, miserable village near Helicon, Asa, vile in winter, painful in summer, never good. The Thespians practically wiped the village off the face of the earth, leaving only a somewhat underwhelming tower where the village once stood. Arms and armour. The Thespians were some of the most heavily armoured out of the Greeks, whilst also being one of the most unique hoplites in all of ancient Greece. For body armour, the Thespians used the standard at the time, the muscle cuirass. The ancient Greek muscle cuirass was a type of armour worn by Greek soldiers during the classical period. It was designed to protect the upper body, consisting of a breastplate and backplate that were attached by straps and buckles. The cuirass was typically made of bronze, and its defining characteristic was the moulded, rippling muscles that were etched into the metal, giving the impression that the wearer had a powerful, muscular physique. The muscle cuirass was not just a functioning piece of armour, but also a symbol of strength and masculinity. It was often worn by the most elite soldiers, such as hoplites and cavalrymen, who were expected to be both physically and mentally strong. The armour was also often adorned with intricate patterns and designs, further emphasising its aesthetic appeal. However, despite this, thespian hoplites were more often portrayed wearing a different type of body armour called a bell cuirass. The ancient Greek bell cuirass was a type of armour worn by Greek soldiers during the classical period. It was designed to protect the upper body, consisting of a breastplate and backplate that was attached by straps and buckles. The cuirass was typically made of bronze, and its defining characteristic was its shape, which resembled a bell flaring outwards at the bottom to protect the lower torso. The bell cuirass was a highly effective form of armour offering protection to the vital organs, whilst also allowing for ease of movement. The armour was also adorned with intricate patterns and designs, further emphasising its aesthetic appeal. As well as this, the Thespians also wore greaves. Ancient Greek greaves were a type of armour worn by Greek soldiers during the classical period. They were designed to protect the lower legs, consisting of metal plates or strips that were attached to the shin by straps and buckles. The greaves were typically made of bronze, although iron and other metals were sometimes used, and they were often decorated with intricate patterns and designs. The use of greaves in ancient Greek warfare was widespread, as the lower legs were particularly vulnerable to injury in battle. Greaves were worn by a variety of soldiers, including hoplites, cavalrymen and archers, and they were often paired with other types of armour, such as a breastplate or helmet. Around the time of the Greco-Persian Wars, the Thespians, much like most of Greece at the time, used the famous Corinthian helmet. The Corinthian helmet is a type of ancient Greek helmet that was widely used by soldiers during the 5th and 4th centuries BC. It is known for its iconic design, which covered the entire head and neck, leaving only the eyes, mouth and nose exposed. The helmet was made of bronze, and its design featured a high crested ridge that ran down the centre of the helmet, with two large ear holes on either side. 
The Corinthian helmet was named after the city-state of Corinth, which was one of the major centres of Greek metalworking during the Classical period. However, it was not just the Corinthians who produced this type of helmet. It was also made by other Greek city-states and was widely used throughout the Greek world. The helmet was a symbol of courage, strength and military prowess and it was often decorated with intricate designs or embossed patterns. Despite its iconic status, the Corinthian helmet eventually fell out of use as advances in metalworking technology allowed for the development of more effective and protective helmet designs. The most iconic piece of the Thespian Hoplites weaponry and armour were their unique shields. The Thespians used a modified type of shield called a hoplum. The shield was typically round and measured around 80 to 90 centimetres in diameter. It was made of wood and covered in a layer of bronze or other metal for added protection. The hoplon shield was an essential piece of equipment for the ancient Greek soldiers, as it provided both offensive and defensive capabilities on the battlefield. The shield was not only used to block incoming attacks from enemy soldiers, but it could also be used as a weapon in its own right. Soldiers could use the edge of the shield to strike their opponents, or they could use the metal covering to bash or bludgeon their enemies. However, the Thespians seem to have sliced two notches into the shield. Tests have shown that this shield was incredibly quick when compared to regular hoplons, although there is some debate on how the shield was held. Most believe the shield was held vertically as this protects the arm whilst also giving the shield some incredible speed. Thespian hoplites are commonly depicted as having painted a white crescent moon on their hoplons against a black background. However, there is no actual evidence for this and it seems to hold a similar sense of iconicness for the Thespians as the famous lambda symbol on Spartan shields. For weaponry, the Thespians use the traditional weapon of the hoplites of Greece, the Dory Spear. The Dory Spear was a type of spear used by ancient Greek soldiers, particularly hoplites during the Classical period. The Dory Spear was typically around 2.5 to 3 meters in length and had a spearhead made of iron, bronze or some other metal. It was designed to be used in close combat, with the spearhead being used to thrust and stab at enemies, and the length of the spear allows soldiers to keep their distance from their opponents. The Dory Spear was an essential weapon in ancient Greek warfare, and its effectiveness was evident in battles such as the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC, where Greek hoplites armed with Dory Spears defeated a larger Persian army. The Dory Spear was also often used in conjunction with a shield, such as the famous Hoplon Shield, which offered additional protection to the soldier while also allowing for more strategic use of the spear. As well as the Dory Spear, Thespian soldiers also wielded a sword called a Xiphos as their secondary weapon. The Xiphos was a type of sword used by ancient Greek soldiers, particularly hoplites during the Classical period. The Xiphos was a short sword, typically around 50 to 60 centimeters in length, with a straight double-edged blade and a hilt that was often adorned with intricate patterns and designs. The sword was designed to be used in close combat, with a short blade allowing for quick and agile movements. The Xiphos was an essential part of ancient Greek warfare, and its effectiveness was evident in battles such as the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BC. As well as the Xiphos, some hoplites used a type of hacking sword called a coppice. The coppice sword had a curved blade that was sharpened on the outer edge which allowed for powerful and efficient chopping and slashing motions. The blade typically measured around 50 to 65 centimeters in length, and the hilt was often curved to provide a better grip for the user. The coppice sword was designed for close quarters combat, and its unique shape allowed for a variety of different attack styles. It can be used to slash, 
chop and thrust, making it a versatile weapon on the battlefield. The curved blade was particularly useful for dealing devastating blows to an enemy's head or neck, making the coppice sword a feared weapon among ancient Greek soldiers. In Battle In battle, the thespians, like all hoplites, used a type of formation known as the phalanx. The Greek phalanx was a military formation used by ancient Greek soldiers, particularly hoplites, during the classical period. It was an innovative and effective tactic that allowed Greek soldiers to defeat much larger and more powerful armies through their use of tightly packed infantry formations. The phalanx formation consisted of rows of soldiers standing shoulder to shoulder, each carrying a dory spear and a hoplon. These soldiers would form a wall of shields, overlapping them to create a near impenetrable barrier. The spears were held upright, forming a forest of long poles that could thrust out and attack enemy soldiers from a distance. The key to the success of the phalanx formation was its discipline and coordination. Soldiers had to be highly trained and skilled to maintain their positions in the formation and move together as a single unit. The phalanx relied on its ability to move in unison and strike with overwhelming force, using the weight of its tightly packed formation to overpower enemy soldiers. However, the thespians seem to have had a slightly different approach to warfare compared to other city-states. You see, the thespians had a bit of a reputation for fighting to the death. At Thermopylae, they were one of the cities that chose to stay behind and fight along with the 300 Spartans. As a result, securing the thespian hoplites a place in history. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Or if you really like the channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. There, for as little as $1 a month, you'll gain access to an ever-expanding variety of exclusive Ancient History Guy content not found anywhere else online. All donations go directly back into the channel, helping us on our campaign to conquer YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.